MMOs on handhelds in the West has been a bit of a pipe dream for a long time. The Switch tried about five months ago with Onigiri, but that port ran very poorly. Thankfully, the new MMO on the Switch did not turn out the same way. Based on DC Comics and something I played quite a bit on the PS3, here is my review of DC Universe Online for the Nintendo Switch. The story of DC Universe Online is about Brainiac coming to invade Earth. In an alternate future, all of the heroes and villains take each other out, leaving only Lex Luthor on Earth. To fight back, he steals Brainiac's information on superpowers and goes to the past, warning the Justice League about what's going to happen and leaking all of that information onto Earth, turning thousands of humans into new heroes and villains that they can use to fight back against Brainiac. You play as one of those new heroes or villains, picking a mentor and being trained so you can fight back against Brainiac's invasion, as well as everything else that's going on as the heroes and villains fight amongst themselves. The story of this game works pretty well, and that's mostly because of the mentor system and the beautiful intro cinematic. When you create a character, you can choose a mentor in the form of heroes, Superman, Batman, or Wonder Woman, or villains Lex Luthor, the Joker, or Circe. And the mentor you choose dictates what story missions you go on and which story missions you don't go on. More interestingly, though, is the fact that you can play both sides of the same story mission. Character 1 could choose Batman as a mentor and go on a mission to stop the Joker from gassing the Gotham PD, whereas Character 2 could pick a villain as a mentor and do the same mission but on the other side, gassing the PD instead of helping them. When it comes to gameplay, this is an MMORPG with beat-em-up gameplay. Across the game, you're going to be navigating huge open-world sandboxes and fighting enemies in real-time combat in both single and multiplayer events. While you certainly don't need me telling you this, this is an online-only game. DC Universe Online on the Switch is the same game you can play on the PS4, PS3, PC, and other consoles. Being an MMO, the first thing you're going to do is create your character from appearance to all of their powers and weapons. Once you do that and go through the tutorial, you're dumped into one of the many open-world sandbox environments based off of DC Universe cities. In MMO fashion, you're going to be wandering around all of these cities with NPCs as well as other players, exploring fighting enemies and doing missions for NPCs that will slowly teach you all of the different features of the game, from the basic combat and skill systems to the more in-depth creating your own base features. Before we go any further, let's talk about this game's free-to-play model. You can download the game and pl either play for free or as a paid subscriber, so let's talk about what you can access as a free member versus a paid member. Free players can access the game's base content, like mentor-based story missions, side quests, and event missions. But there are restrictions here with a lot of story content that free players cannot access. The developers have released 34 chapters of post-game story content that only members can access. This includes those story missions as well as many of the locations where these missions take place. Granted, these are post-game story missions, so them being DLC does make sense, but with the sheer number of these episodes, it's no exaggeration to say that the majority of the game's story content is not available to free members. The game's also got character restrictions if you're a free player. Free players only get two character slots, whereas paid members get over a dozen. And over half of the power skill trees that you can equip your character with when you start the game are not available to free players either. So if you want your player to have powers like electricity or divine powers, you have to buy DLC or be a member to be able to access those specific power options. But let's get out of that and talk about how progression in this game works. You've got all these huge sandbox areas that you're exploring, and you've got missions that will keep pushing you to new locations. Some of these missions are given to you automatically as part of the story, whereas others can be given by NPCs, or by just going into the menu, finding the on-duty section, and signing up for co-op or PvP events. And when it comes to all these missions, you're pretty much going to be going through every mission doing the same thing each time. Going around fighting enemies and interacting in objects for some reason or another. Of course, there's going to be all kinds of different reasons why you're doing these missions like trying to keep Giganta from taking over Wonder Girl's body or saving Batwoman from being murdered. But every mission I went through basically had me just doing the same thing, going in, fighting enemies, and interacting with a certain number of certain objects for whatever reason. No matter what the reasoning was, it was always the same thing with the actions that you have to do. The only thing that sets the missions apart are the story cutscenes and when you get to fight a boss in the form of a famous DC character. And of course, the RPG elements and character growth systems also help this not feel as repetitive as it sounds. As you finish missions and take down enemies, you'll get experience and eventually level up, allowing you to learn new skills as well as allocate stat points to learn new combos with your weapons. The simple way you fight during your first mission where you don't have that many things you can do is going to be drastically different than the fighting style you're going to be doing when you find that final mentor mission around level 30. When I started my sorcery character, I was just randomly shooting beams out of my hands because that's all I could do. And by the end of the game, I was setting up buff shields and healing circles and managing both long range and close range combat depending on what situation I had thrown at me. Granted, there are a few missions in the game that are structured in a way that feel repetitive otherwise, because no matter what you can do, running up to one 
one enemy, killing it, interacting with it, and then running it up to another singular enemy and doing that for 20 enemies straight is going to feel slow and repetitive regardless of how flashy you can fight them. Now in terms of content and length, how much are you really getting as a free member? The answer is about 10 hours of content. That's how long it took me to reach level 30 and complete all of my main story mentor missions. Now outside of that, you do have a bunch of other side stuff you can do like side quests, bounties, races, and all of those co-op events that come up in the post game to help increase your item and stats to prepare you for whenever you want to get a membership or buy those episodes. Now let's go into presentation. Graphically, the Switch version is comparable to the PS3 version. There are jagged edges here and there, but overall it looks pretty good, especially if you go into handheld mode, because the graphics don't really look any different between docked and handheld. Now in terms of performance, the game is surprisingly smooth. There are some frame drops here and there when you're going around on the open world, but overall it maintains a really nice frame rate, especially with this being an MMO and having tons and tons of characters on screen at once. The only big blemish on performance is crashing, and even that's a pretty minor thing. The game is so good at auto-saving progress that every time it's crashed on me, which is probably about four or five times in ten hours, I've always reloaded the game and I've never lost any progress. Now let's talk battery life, which is another thing that surprised me. DC Universe Online has a battery range of three hours and six minutes on high settings, up to three hours and 41 minutes on low settings. Now in conclusion, DC Universe Online is a shining example that MMOs can be done on handhelds and be optimized well. Now the downside, a lot of the game is hidden behind DLC and paid memberships, and the game has a tendency to crash every so often. But if you're a fan of DC Comics and want an MMO where you can make your own superhero or supervillain, this is definitely worth a download. Reviews to Go rates DC Universe Online for the Nintendo Switch an 8.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.